everybody, my name is Dina, and welcome to Unit 16, Lesson 1, Special Effects. In this lesson, we're going to be going over the wide range of special effects that Vegas has to offer. Vegas has a huge library with various built-in effects at your disposal. Just like the transitions, it is used so often that it even has a dedicated tab in the Explorer window for easy access and previewing. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Alright, let's take it from the beginning. What are special effects? Well, special effects in video making are basically plugins that allow you to alter the look or behavior of your raw footage. Special effects is a very broad term that can be used in many ways, like picture in picture, for example. That can be considered a special effect, even though it was edited directly with the pan crop tool without any actual plugins applied to it. But in this lesson, we're going to be looking at Vegas's built-in plugins that can be applied to any clip to give it a little more flair or to achieve the specific look or feeling that you want. First, let's move on over to our Explorer window. And on the bottom, click on Video FX. Because there are so many effects in Vegas's library, much like transitions, the program will sort them all into different categories for you to make it easier to find. When we click on the Video FX tab, we will automatically be taken to the category All, which, of course, contains all of the special effects sorted by alphabetical order. Again, like the transitions, clicking on each special effect will open up the different types and variations on the right for you to choose from. Hovering over any of the effects will also play back and preview the effect, showing you what it looks like when applied versus without. If there is one, the checkered background means that it is transparent. Applying special effects, whether stationary or not, will apply to the entirety of the clip. However, don't panic if you actually only want the effect on a small part of your clip. We're going to cover basic animations later in the unit, and there, we'll be going over how you can customize anything to appear, disappear, and move whenever and wherever you want. Coming back to the Video FX window, let's look at the categories. Now that we've mentioned all, let's move on to the detailed tabs. First up, Creative. This tab contains special effects that directly manipulate the footage itself. For example, effects like Crop, Deform, Swirl, or Radial Pixelate tend to be more complex and come with many settings. These will directly change the structure or subject of your footage and change it in a more dramatic way than the other effects. As the tab suggests, it falls under the Creative tab because it has the most potential for being used creatively, whereas some other effects have more limited, straightforward uses. Next up, we have the category Color. This category is what it says, and the effects that fall under this category have to do with color manipulation, meaning that they allow you to change all aspects of color in your picture or footage. These include tools from simple brightness, to contrast, to color correction, and actual filters. Very similar to the preset filters you get to choose from in Instagram and other photo sharing social media apps. How to use some of these color effects will be discussed in lesson 5 of this unit, color correction and white balance. The next category is utility. This category houses the useful effects that are used to alter your footage and achieve very specific outcomes. Compared to creative, these effects are less fancy and serve to fix a problem or have a single practical use. These include common effects such as masking or chroma keyer, 
both of which we will discuss in more detail in the coming lessons. To give a one-sentence description, masking is the act of cutting out shapes in your original raw footage, and chroma keying is used for green screen effects. The next category we have is Blur. This category is pretty straightforward and has all of the effects that have to do with blurring your footage. Normally, blur effects are pretty simple and are used in many scenarios. But Vegas has a variety of different types of blurs that you can apply for stylistic or storytelling uses. For example, Blurs are useful for making backgrounds that allow your main subject to stand out, or for practical uses, like blurring out the faces of people who don't want to appear on screen. Then we have the category Light. These effects are mostly used to digitally construct lighting effects that could have been made with the right expensive equipment or ideal weather conditions. Expensive equipment is hard to get, and nobody can control the weather, which is why these effects are built in so that editors can still apply and achieve these effects even without the equipment or natural sunlight. Next, we have the tab labeled 360. I don't think many people will need these effects since they are used to create and adjust full 360 degree footage. This requires special cameras and technology, which most people don't have or need for smaller projects. Then, like transitions, we have third party, which is used to contain effects or plugins that didn't come with Vegas already when you installed it. And then favorites, which is used for you to mark effects that you use more often and want to access easier. Now that we've gone over the categories of effects, I'd like to talk about a few more tips about them. One thing to note is that multiple effects can be used on one single clip and can stack on top of each other. For example, by combining some of our later lessons, we could use the chroma key effect along with the color correction effect. That would be a utility effect and a color effect used together in order to replicate the kind of feeling and atmosphere that we want. You can essentially stack as many effects as you want into one clip. As long as they work for your narrative and the message you're trying to get across, all of it is up to your creativity. Another useful tip that isn't really about a plugin effect, but is still worth mentioning, is when we are using multiple pieces of generated and edited media. Copy and pasting generated media can go two ways. Let's use a simple piece of text as an example. A very useful way to use generated media, if you need multiples, is of course copying and pasting them. However, when you copy a piece of media that exists on your project, and try to paste it back onto the timeline, a pop-up window will appear that will ask you if you want to create a new copy of the source media or create a reference to the original media. Creating a new copy will basically act as if you have duplicated the same piece of media with the same existing settings and then pasted the new copy back onto your timeline. You can edit your new piece of media without it affecting the original that you copied. However, if you were to choose create a reference to the original media, it will create an exact copy of the original piece of media and will reference the original consistently. This means any changes made to any of the pieces that were created as a reference will change all of the copies including the original one. This can be very useful in different ways. For example, creating a new copy of the source media will create a new piece of media while retaining its attributes and settings, which will save a lot of time compared to starting over every single time. 
Let's say we're making some title cards, which have the same title throughout but different subtitles. So let's make one now, just as an example. Go to text and let's type editing class. And under that, lesson one. Let's change the color and font to Then, go to the Pan Crop tool to adjust the sizing so it's in the middle of the screen. Great! Now, to make the same title card for Lesson 2, all we have to do here is copy it, paste it as a new copy of Source Media, and then go change the 1 to a 2. This will keep the position, size, or even an applied effect, if I had one. Now, go back to check on our original. It still says Lesson 1, while our new one says Lesson 2. Another practical use is for applying video subtitles that have already been formatted and placed in the right position. The other option, creating a reference to the original, is useful if you need actual copies of your original media throughout different points on your timeline. Let's make an example now that says, Fun Fact! Same thing, play with the fonts and the colors, and then copy-paste it this time with the Create a Reference option. If you later decide you want to change something, like the color for all of them, instead of going into the settings of each and every one of those medias and changing them, you can change the color of any fun fact that was copy-pasted as a reference, and every other instance of that text will change along with it. That's all for an overview of Vegas' special effects. For the next few lessons, I'll be going into much more detail and teaching you about the most commonly used or most useful effects that editors may use during a video. Next up are chroma keys and green screens. I can't wait to show you exactly how useful and convenient they can be to make your video more dynamic and interesting to watch. I'll see y'all in the next lesson. Bye!